Hi, Timothy here. Last time we had a lot of ramen and sweets. While they are delicious, they are not necessarily healthy. And to keep it perfectly balanced as all things should be, we are going to try some traditional and healthy Kyoto cuisines. And we will begin with the restaurant right across this river. At our first location, we are going to try Kyoto style soba. On a quick glance, it looks like a regular soba, but if you look closely, there is something that is sticking out. So let's dig deeper and see what we have underneath. It's really big. So here we have a whole herring fish, which is the specialty of this shop. Hmm? Wow, the fish is really really good. It's not fishy, very flavorful, and kinda sweet. So this is what it meant by don't judge a book by its cover. The soba noodle is light and has a smooth texture. It's a pretty nice light dashi broth. It has a slightly more fishy taste, obviously because of the fish. This will be a perfect dish on a cold day. At our next location, we are going to have another fish. But this time it is in the form of sushi. More specifically, Saba Sushi, which is a mackerel sushi. It's really huge. It is bigger than most sushi, and it is covered with seaweed. Oh yeah, that's delicious. It is very fatty, salty, and quite vinegary. We also got a grilled Saba. So let's try it. It has a nice smoky flavor but it makes the texture a bit more firm. Last but not least, we have sushi rice covered with mackerels. The other one has too much rice, but this one got the right balance between the fish and the rice. On the side, they give some pickles and tiny slices of mackerel sashimi and a bowl of soup. It is a nice hearty soup. Next up, we are going to try one of Kyoto's most popular dishes, tofu, and it is usually served in kaiseki style. Simply put, it is a multi-course meal full of tofu dishes. Similar to other course meal, they will serve you one dish at a time, starting from the appetizer. Oh, that was good. It is a bit dense, chewy, and tastes nutty. Moving on, we have tofu sashimi, which is raw tofu skin. The texture is a bit watery, and it is very bland. The next item is boiled tofu, just blocks of boiled tofu with some spinach. So you scoop out a block of tofu onto your plate, add a bit of soy sauce, some ginger, and green onions that resulted in a soft but slightly spicy tofu. Next course is the grilled dishes. And we are looking specifically at this grilled tofu skewer. So the top is not burned, but it is grilled miso paste, similar to what I had in Nagano. So they use a different kind of tofu. The boiled one was soft, but this one is firm and dense. The miso has a nice char and kinda sweet. Next item on the list is steam dish. So this one is basically just a steamed tofu with some broth. And there are a few pieces of eel inside as well. Then we move on to the fried dish. Fried tofu skin. It's very crunchy but doesn't really have any flavor. That's why you have to dip it in the salt for some flavor. The last item on the list, rice and pickles. Most kaiseki put rice at the end of the meal, which is something I never understood why. For dessert, they serve a mango sorbet, which was pretty good. Our fourth and last location is a buffet. 
but not just any buffet. It is a vegetable buffet. Yes, you heard it right. Vegetable buffet. I know that it is not the most appealing food, but if we are vegetarian or just want to try some Japanese vegetable, this is the place to go. The veggies are nice and very fresh. They also have so many noodles, which is a wheat flour noodles that you can make yourself. A cold somen noodle is a great way to beat the summer heat. Other than the fresh vegetables, they have soups and some fried foods, which you can refry. So you will always have them hot and crunchy. Aside from the buffet, you can also get a sukiyaki or shabu shabu. Here I have the sukiyaki, and the meat looks really good, but it seems like there's not enough broth in this pot, so it took a while to cook. The sukiyaki broth is um a bit light, but the meat is really good. It is well seasoned and it is very tender. So those are some traditional Kyoto cuisines. While they may not have strong flavors like ramen or wagyu, they are delicious in their own way. And to complete this Kyoto food tour. We are going to finish it with matcha desserts, so stay tuned for that. So that's gonna do it for now, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.